Right. <clears throat> I have no idea what I'm going to talk about tonight. <laughs> Anybody got any ideas? I'm sure your plans changed. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to talk about the great O'Neill, but when I see the great O'Neill here, <laughs> I am, and, I, and the way he's looking at me. <laughs> Already, I came here to defend myself. I know you did. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm wondering <laughs> whether I should brave this or not. Huh? Oh, am I ever? Am I ever? It's gone down there tightly. I could end up excommunicated tonight. The Fitzgerald, that's what we'll do. Yeah, we'll talk about the Fitzgerald. Oh, no, it's what I'm going to even do it worse. I'm going to really, really put the record straight. Just watch it. can't talk about Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth? Oh, well, you can't talk about O'Neill without talking about Queen Elizabeth. That's for sure. But I'm going to try and um, not deal with this stuff. So, uh, you know, that's, that's wonderful, but I'm going to see if I can't just uh, look at it from a broader, a broader perspective. So that would then... I would like to borrow those sheets when you're done today. I would like to see what a brain man was said, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a leading question there. <laughs> When did you stop beating your wife? <laughs> sort of yeah, what a brave man would have said. Right, <clears throat> the great O'Neill. They were all great, including the present one. Oh, all right. The evening's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> but uh, the O'Neills were great. I mean, that's a fact. They're, 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 so it's not just... Uh, Shane or Hugh. Now, depending on which you can, different people say that Shane O'Neill was the great O'Neill, others say that Hugh O'Neill was the great O'Neill. And right there uh, tells you a lot about their perceptions uh, about the English Irish situation and the, grab a chair, and um, the, the religious aspect of it. Um, now let me see. Let me wait. Let me see where where. Shall I go back out again. Um, there's so many different. It's like the elephant. It's it's hard to know where what end of the elephant to get hold of here. Um, and he's kind of intimidating me a little bit here. Well, tell me who he is. <laughs> Oh, him? Yeah. Oh, this is an O'Neill. Yeah. I gathered that. But and he's a friend of the Pope. He actually, he ser serves the Pope. Do you know that's what a Monsignor is? It's like a page boy to the Pope. Is that right? A page boy. Oh, yeah. Personal servant to the Pope. That's right. That's right. He didn't, he didn't ask me to do any dirty work yet. <laughs> <laughs> but he might after tonight. <laughs> Uh, uh, now you're such yeah, a sweet lady right. you are. It's so nice. He's the oldest practicing priest in the Sunday Garden. Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah. Absolutely, no, no doubt about it. Yeah, yeah. After him, the Delage. Um <clears throat> But I really, I'm, I, I'm not normally this hesitant, am I? Yeah, I'm normally, you know, very much, because I really don't know what aspect of this to uh, to really get going on. Um, I think that the greatness of the O'Neills and the, the fact that they had so much trouble with the English and the fact that um, the English feared them so much and the fact that they lasted as long as they did as quintessential Irish chieftains is a way, in a way, is about the greatest compliment that the English and the Catholic Church could pay the O'Neills, or pay Ireland, but for a very different reason than what you might imagine. The reason why they were so dangerous to the established order of Europe and Britain was because they predated every other family, royal or otherwise, in Europe. Uh, Ireland was the only country that had ruling families going back literally thousands of years. Everybody else in Europe, uh, including Solomon the Turk, at, who was a contemporary of uh, Hugh and Shane, they were relative newcomers. 
Now, why wouldn't that be a badge of honor and considered as such? Why wasn't that honored by the English and by uh, the Europeans? Because it was pre-Christian. They considered them pagan. They, they did not get their authority from the divine right of kings. They did not come down like Charlemagne did <clears throat> or Clovis the Frank and, and the, the, the Visigoths. And the, uh, uh, did, they did not go down to Rome, obtain their rightful, the right to govern from the Roman Catholic Church. And for that reason, they, are, they were unacceptable to both the European Christian Catholic kings and queens and to the English. And even though England turned Protestant, it wasn't a Catholic Protestant thing, it was a Christian thing. And as you know, the English king, I'm sorry, the, the Roman, the English uh, pope, Adrian the first or whatever it was. Was it Adrian the first? It must have been. That that gave Ireland to Henry the second. They never retracted that. The the Roman popes, even after Henry the Eighth and Elizabeth turned Protestant or reformed and left the Catholic Church, and even after they excommunicated Elizabeth, they never withdrew the or the, 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 the laudabiliter. Just think about that. Um, so <clears throat> even though Elizabeth had broken away and Henry had broken away f from the Roman Church, the Roman Church still acknowledged they may have excommunicated her, but they didn't make her illegal. They didn't dis... This, what would be the word, robe her or uncrown her. And you'll see this uh, in uh, a lot of the, particularly the senior clergy, like during the time of uh, Shane, the primate of Armagh, who obviously was uh, very Roman, that was before the, um, the Anglican Church took over Armagh, it was still the Roman See accepted and actually preached and um, ranted and raved to the O'Neills that they weren't legitimate. Elizabeth was their legitimate heir, was, was their legitimate ruler. And it's not that they were pro-English. They accepted her right to rule and not the Irish. Now that you won't hear, that I've never heard in an Irish history class, you know. Because it's, well, it's not blaming the church, but it's sort of blaming the church. It's sort of saying, well, you guys always favored the English. And they did. Um, <clears throat> but that was the reason they did it. They didn't do, do it out of any other, any other reason. It also explains, I think, at its very, very most fundamental root, the racist anti-Irish uh, feeling in England. And you may often wonder, well, why was it also latent in the Spanish and the French? And it was. It was because the Irish were essentially pagan. And certainly the O'Neills were. Now, remember, the other great families of Ireland were the Fitzgeralds, the Butlers, and the Ormonds. They were all earls, you know, so you already had the Earl of Fitzgerald, the Earl of Orm. And they were already connected to the English system. They were all because they were Normans, and of course they, they, they had their divine right to rule from the legitimate system of of, uh, of Europe. But the O'Neills did not, nor did Grani Whale, nor did the old chieftains that never submitted. Um, and I, I that's why I think the O'Neills were unique because they were huge. They, they had enormous power. On 